these three technologies like the AI and CCP, they are quite close to each other. Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, like the the CCP is quite strong on and heavy yeah. on AI, and they 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 favor AI and they don't like crypto that much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, NYT, uh, of course, it's quite uh, it's like uh, maps to the social like social networks. You know, they're like soft power, mm, and uh, and crypto and Bitcoin. It's kind of obvious. You know, they're like the, the Bitcoin. So like these are the three top power attractors, and also yeah. they map quite uh, nicely on these three technologies but it's also uh, as we discussed before you you get a centralized and decentralized version so peter Thiel to uh, talks like uh, has this saying that um uh, ai is communist and uh, crypto is libertarian but like yeah. you can complicate it because you know like china has the cbdc the the, the dig digital yuan they're quite far uh with um the, uh, yeah with it and then you and then you have uh, I don't know let's say stable diffusion which is like the decentralized AI and open source AI so you can get like all both of these these versions yeah. Hello, welcome back to Dumbo's Desk, a weekly podcast covering deep conversation on technology, philosophy, complex science, and cryptocurrency. My name is Duke Tambo, and the following is a conversation with Yaku Shimek a co-founder of Wizard DAO and an author of Wisdom Enterprising. In today's uh, episode, I will be talking with Jakub Shimek about his article, AI, Crypto and Social, under the Daily Balladism series. And now, dear friends, here is Jakub Shimek. Jakub, thank you for joining me again uh, on Mutambo's Desk podcast. Thank you, Duke. Pleasure is mine. Uh, well, let's start by talking about AI and how it has uh, transformed our world. According to Balaj Sinvasan, AI has brought us into the age of a uh, short phrase, if I can call it that. Can you expand on that statement uh, to us? Yeah, yeah. So all these three technologies like AI, social and crypto actually brought us into the age of a short phrase, because like with AI, you use prompts like short sentences or a couple of words to actually uh, make AI do useful things like produce some kind of um, highly accurate or abstract image uh, or in the near future, even video. Uh, art uh, you can basically yeah just with a prompt uh, make it to produce uh even like some some like some kind of software or you know like a, like a coding you know so uh basically with a prompt uh, a very short sentence uh, you get an output that would have required like even thousands of lines of code you know at some some occasions so that's uh, ai and just like uh, with social uh, you get like a hashtag uh, where uh, which can start a global movement, and with the uh, crypto you get um, like a, a mnemonic phrase where uh, you let's say to to restore your wallet, you know you have to remember uh, or write down somewhere like twelve or thirteen or fourteen uh, words. Uh, and those 12 words can actually store like I don't know, 100 million uh, worth of crypto or something. So it's just like 12 words and they're really powerful. And let's say one short hashtag, it's really powerful. And actually also like this prompt engineering, if you are good at it and um, also trying to get better, you know, just like using stable diffusion, it's still just like uh, tinkering with it. But like if you are, if you get really good at prompt engineering, you can create like some some quite amazing piece of art or something. And it's quite sensitive or, or for, um, uh, yeah. depends on the words you use. Yeah. And chat GPT yeah. too. Yeah, okay, that's that's interesting. I think it's safe to say uh, that AI has uh, had a profound impact on the way we communicate and create content. But as you mentioned uh, in your article, it has also been used by governments uh, for surveillance and control, such as with the Chinese social credit system. What are your thoughts uh, on the balance between the benefits and potential uh, consequences of AI? 
Yeah, so all technologies, uh, these three technologies, AI, social, and crypto, can be used for uh, good and bad purposes. You know, it's just like they are actually quite neutral in this sense. It's like a hammer or a knife, you know, can be used for good and bad as well. Uh, and they, uh, and interestingly, uh, they all three have like decentralized and centralized versions uh, of them. You know, so like the Chinese government is quite heavy on AI, using it to monitor citizens, to even like um, uh, uh, create like these social credit scores. Uh, you know, you 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 get like facial recognition, pose recognition, like some other. Uh, I don't know, voice recognition, this and that, like it can be like monitored and um, evaluated by AI. And, but uh, you get, that's like the centralized AI and you get uh, also like more decentralized AI, like stable diffusion, you know, or something where you can fork it like open source versions and, uh, and it can be used uh, to empower, uh, yeah, citizens and artists, like anyone to create their own art or write a, uh proposal or write a, like a business plan or even like uh help them to learn to code and to create their i don't know their business their software their website even to produce a script or let's say uh, produce some visual art and in the near future a movie so anyone in, around the world can get a voice you know mm -hmm. as we discussed before uh uh, uh, Chimamanda Adichie Ngozi uh, and her uh, uh, idea that uh, the danger of a single story so like uh, the, the stories shouldn't be produced only in Hollywood you know and only by like let's say some woke elites or something but it, they can be produced by uh, anyone in the world you know yeah. uh, to let's say promote their tribe to promote their uh, their country or or a region and yeah or their own myth you know and uh, their own stories of their tribe yeah mm -hmm. uh absolutely uh it's truly fascinating how this technology are evolving and how they are uh, shaping the world we live in speaking of hybrid ai uh um uh, ai human collaboration how do you think this uh will impact the job market and uh the way we work in the future yeah, it's actually, uh, I think Alexander Bart uh, and Daniel Schmachtenberger, they came up with this. You had Alexander Bart on your podcast, so, but they come, came up with this uh, concept of symbiotic intelligence. So it's like, uh, actually, it's not like the machine uh, beats the human or vice versa, but you can, uh, you know, you can get quite effective with uh, with the AI. And actually, you know, we, we see it now with, uh, at, at, at least with you, because you are using chat GPT, so, uh, you know, I'm still like, um, I'm just using stable diffusion, but I still need to get into this chat GPT uh, kind of thing, you know, just like uh, using it on a daily basis, but I use stable diffusion on a daily basis. And it just like makes you to, <laughs> I don't know, to create uh, some visual art that would otherwise otherwise take, I don't know, hours and hours of rendering and of like, um, mm -hmm. and it can be cut in, uh, the time can be cut into minutes, you know, like, so, okay, sometimes it takes me <laughs> 20 minutes to, but it uh, I can produce like, I don't know, uh, 50 different kind of uh, things with uh, stable diffusion and then I just pick one, you know, which, yeah. which looks the best. And of course, it's still early and it's not perfect. And uh, and also my uh, my prompt engineering skills are not really uh, are subpar. So I need to, need to get better. But this is like an example uh, and some previous examples like... Um, yeah uh, um you could you could get uh yeah you could for example yeah, anything you do you can get better like at writing or you can get better at predicting uh or at trading or i don't know um managing your project or managing your time or contacts or um, yeah just like uh, using AI for for many things um uh yeah and it will this this area will just uh like grow and grow okay um i couldn't uh agree more uh let's move on uh, to the topic of crypto bitcoin was uh the first crypto currency and since then uh central banks around the world have been considering their own cbdc's what do you see 
uh, as the future of cryptocurrency and uh, its impact on our economy? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there are countries like every central bank and every country is at least like considering CBDC, like central bank digital coins. Yeah, it's like at least like thinking about it or like discussing it somewhere. And uh, the Chinese digital yuan is actually quite far. Uh, it crossed like 100 billion yuan in transactions and uh, and also it uh, uh, tested some cross-border transactions. So mm -hmm. the digital yuan has uh, still uh, like only 3% share globally. I mean, sorry, not digital yuan, but the yuan uh, in general compared to like uh, dollar and euro. It's like dollar is like about 40%. The euro is like 30 something percent, you know, almost 40. And so digital yuan is just like 3%. Uh, but like, um, but it's similar to uh, electric vehicles, you know, they're like uh, much easier to produce than, um, than uh, regular vehicles or a uh, meaning like they have less parts so like 100 times less parts than the, the internal combustion engine uh, vehicles i'm not saying they're easy easier to produce but they're uh, easier to mm, yeah it's just like a different category where a new entrant can win so like bid is like uh, together with tesla you know they're like dominate or will dominate the this car, uh, car industry uh, segment of uh, evs uh, electric vehicles and the the, the B, B, byd uh, ceo uh, actually mentioned like many years ago that uh, digital watches uh, are easier to produce than the analog ones so maybe we don't know how to produce the analog ones but we will we will produce the best digital watches so this is similar with uh, cryptocurrency you know like uh, satoshi nakamoto created the first uh, you know the bitcoin uh, digital gold um, where uh yeah it's like a digital gold so you can just as we discussed you can remember like some mnemonic phrase like 12 words let's say and you can carry your uh your wealth with you uh anywhere you go uh and that's like the use case and also uh, the everybody's uh every user is is, is a root user that's like the 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 promise of crypto and uh, the, the use case for Bitcoin is like digital gold. So it's, um, it's like seizure resistant because like the, the physical gold are, is quite heavy and actually it can be tracked like with metal de uh, detectors. And so Bitcoin and some other kind of uh, then cryptocurrencies like the Monero or Zcash and um, they are like uh, also like pseudonymous uh, uh bitcoin is of course it's public uh, the the transactions and um but um but anyhow uh okay uh, so you, you get like uh, uh with crypto you you get this promise of every user is a root user you have digital gold but what i wanted to say just back back to the point is that it was pretty difficult to create uh bitcoin you know because like they were not like uh it, it wasn't like newton leibniz uh situation where you get like two geniuses coming up with the same innovation at the same time or in similarly you know like very short after each other but it was like just like one one guy just uh or yeah satoshi yeah. nakamoto like pseudonymous person coming up with this but uh, currently you know anyone can do it you know so it's yeah. like easier you know if you have digital things it's you get more of them you know like if you have digital photos you can you can like take like, thousand photos in a day and like i don't know hours of video and no nobody cares you know before you had to like come and develop the photo so I remember actually do, doing this uh, at some kind of workshop, you know, like developing the photos. It was like, now, you know, and now you can, you, you, you know, and the, and the same thing, like, you know, you created, uh, you created the, the Bezer Shakoin, you know, we're just like uh, playing around uh, and like uh, learning different Solana kind of things, like how to create a DAO, how to create it. A token yeah. and you did it you know <laughs> so we, we were learning together and you know like anyone can <laughs> just like create it yeah. uh, uh, like not not anyone but like almost anyone you know who yeah. who has some time to to learn some uh from youtube you know or something like that so yeah. uh yeah i mean that's that's crazy you know like before like 10 years ago or 12 years ago it, or 13 years ago it was like the world-class invention maybe um 
like a historic event, something like a reformation or something, maybe like a like once in a hundred or five hundred years kind of even though like now everyone can you know just yeah. created their token just like to test it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's so that's that's interesting, you know. Yeah, that's very interesting perspective. Uh lastly, let's talk about uh social networks. Biology explains uh that the goal in the early 2000s was to get everyone online and social networks uh, grew in size and value due to the network effect and uh, met Carfield's uh, law. How, however, this is also created uh, um, the network defect of highly advisor, uh, advisorial uh, communities. Can you explain uh, what he means by this and uh, what the future of social networks might look like? Yeah, so network defect, that's another biologism. So it's like a network effect, but, you know, uh, like um, in a ne negative way. So like basically you have like a global leaderboard, like Twitter is like the global arena where people are fighting, you know, so <laughs> it's just like, you know, who gets the most likes and retweets and I don't know who gets most rationed, uh, uh, you know, like uh, ratio. Yeah, ratio <laughs> is the, 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 the word, I guess yeah um yeah so it's like um, you know it's uh balaji talks about the highly aligned communities in his book the network state and like how to create a network union like a highly aligned something like a trade union but you know like uh, but on a network like digital union but he calls it network union mm -hmm. where actually you get like close to a hundred percent engagement rate so if you like just to provide an example from the trade unions you know every somebody's striking you know like it shouldn't be just like 0 0.2 percent members striking it should be like 100 percent members striking otherwise you get like the people who are destroying the, the strike and they get like punished or something by their colleagues uh, yeah. But that's just like an example, you know, from the the unions. But it, it, similarly, you if you uh, take Twitter, um, it's not a highly aligned community because you uh, like people like Balaji have like million followers across platforms. Or let's say if someone has a million followers, and uh, he or she posts uh, uh, posts a status or a tweet, uh, I don't know uh, if she, if she tweets uh, tweets. Uh, she gets like um, uh, 2,000 uh, likes or something, yeah. you know, compared to getting almost 100, you know, that would be like a highly aligned community. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's interesting. So, uh, Jakub, according to Balaji, these uh, three uh, technologies also map somewhat to the uh, tripolar power attractors of today, that is uh, CCP, BTC, and NYT or communist uh, capital, crypto capital, and uh, work capital. Can you give us a bit more insight into this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like th these kind of uh, uh, fusions are Hegelian synthesis, you know, because if you get like uh, CCP is like Communist uh, Party of China, you know, or Ch Chinese Communist Party, you get like a, a kind of... Uh, paradoxical kind of connections you know you have like communist and capital which is like communists were against capitalism and also woke capital you know you get like nyt you know you get some someone who is like woke leftist or something and usually they were against capitalism but now you get like this like woke race ra ration uh, ration is like the the the, the the weapons manufacturer, you know, and producing walk adverts, you know, advertising and stuff like that. Or, you know, so you get all these like strange fusions, but like basically, but it's like a left right fusion. So basically, the left provides the, the narrative and the justification, and the right provides the capital or the, the, the effective execution and the effective uh, project management. Or, yeah, so you get like these fusions. And so, uh, these are like the top uh, three power attractors are like the uh, CCP, the Communist, Chinese Communist Party. So CCP, uh, NYT is like the New York Times. They're like um, kind of like, uh, yeah, well, like point in this uh, quite a big uh, node in this, like, let's say, woke network uh, um, 
and yeah because they're like uh, you know they're like the most prestigious media still even they they they're wrong many times and they were wrong as the 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 gray lady winked the book by ashley Rin, rinsberg details like how they get many things wrong uh over the the last century and like uh, many decades but anyhow they're still strong and then you get like btc like that's like the new entrant like bitcoin you know and you get a bitcoin maximalism uh-huh. as a movement on the rise and bitcoin is like the the most pre- prestigious crypto or something you know it's the the, yeah. the the father of crypto and so of course and these three technologies like the ai and ccp they are quite close to each other mm-hmm. you know, meaning uh like the the ccp is quite strong on and heavy yeah. on ai and they 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 favor ai and they don't like crypto that much yeah. uh and uh, nyt uh of course it's quite uh it's like uh, maps to the social like social networks you know they're like soft power mm-hmm. and uh and crypto and bitcoin it's kind of obvious you know they're like the, the bitcoin so like these are the three top power attractors and also yeah. they map quite uh, nicely on these three technologies but it's also uh, as we discussed before you you get centralized and decentralized versions so peter thiel to- uh, talks like uh, has this saying that um uh, ai is communist and uh, crypto is libertarian but like yeah. you can complicate it because you know like china has the cbdc the the, the G- digital yuan they're quite far uh with um the, uh, yeah with it and then you and then you have uh, I don't know let's say stable diffusion which is like the de- decentralized AI and open source AI so you can get like all of both of these these versions yeah okay um, that's a great point and uh, it highlights uh, the importance of being uh, proactive about the future of work and ensuring that everyone has uh, the skills they need to thrive uh, in a rapidly changing world well that concludes our discussion on AI crypto and social and the impact they uh, they are having on the world. Thank you, Yakub, for joining me today and uh, providing such valuable insights. Yeah, it was great. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed listening to Tambo's Desk Podcast, don't forget to subscribe, give this episode a thumbs up, and be sure to come back next week for another episode. Until then, this is Dukum Tambo, and don't forget to do good always. Mm-hmm.